Coming up next is uh, Sarah Hillis. And uh, while Sarah makes her way to the stage, I'll just mention that uh, back at the table, Sarah has brought, uh, I don't know, about a dozen of her CDs. I'm not sure how many. Um, so if you like her music and would like to pick up a CD, uh, they're on sale back there. What, what are they costing? $10. They're for $10. Uh, okay. All right. Well. I always love September, and I always sort of forget why. And then I get the magical email from Jeremiah that says the first open stage is happening. <laughs> it always makes me energized. Uh, however, I don't think my music will be quite energizing. <laughs> it's rather more contemplative, so... Uh, anyway, I'll begin with a piece from my album, which is my only album to date, because I haven't written anything else, so... <laughs> Uh, there we are. Uh, the album's called The Laurel Tree. There are, there at least were ten at the beginning of the night, probably still are. Ten CDs back there, uh, ten dollars a piece. It's, uh, it's very mood, sort of mood music, I don't know, medieval castle, I don't know, very Celtic music. And I'm going to begin with a piece called Kubla Khan, which is, the poem is by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and he claims that it's not finished. I believe it's one of the most perfect pieces of literature you can ever imagine, but he claims he was interrupted in its com composition by some mysterious visitor coming to his door. And uh, you know how we do get interrupted from time to time in our lives, but I think he's just making it up because he thinks people won't like it very much. <laughs> he was always very, uh, had a lot of self esteem issues with Coleridge. But here it is Kubla Khan. In Xanadu did Kuba Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where out the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down. Twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers was girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills, where blossomed many an incense bearing tree. Five miles meandering with amazing 
lost through the ages and people just keep singing them and that's the more important thing about folk music is that it keeps getting sung and reinvented and re reinterpreted. And this, uh, this piece, I've always sort of ignored it. I've been a Celtic music fan for some time now. And I've never really looked at this piece until I heard uh, a version on Marina McKennett's latest album, The Wind That Shakes the Barley. Uh, and she does it very hauntingly as, as part of the accompaniment uh, she has a, a cellist playing on harmonics all the way through. It's very, very eerie sounding. Uh, this won't be that eerie sounding. <laughs> but uh, it's called The Parting Glass, and it's a really beautiful piece. Hopefully I'll do it justice. <laughs> Done. 
softly call 